Hi, this is Sandeep Jain from Geeks for Geeks. We are soon going to start a live course on data structures and algorithm. This course is going to be on weekends. Me and Mr. Shashi Bhushan will be taking these classes. The idea of this course is similar to something what we run in Noida, the offline classroom program. We will be covering same topics in these live classes. In this video, I will discuss an example problem. Let's take a look at this problem. We are given prices of a stock for end days. So price for day 1 is 15, price for day 2 is 13 and so on. We need to find span of the stock for all end days. Span of a stock for on a day is equal to count of days just before it, contiguous days just before it, which have the value smaller or same. And the current day is also included. Let's understand with this example, say 16 is there, how many days just before it have smaller or same values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is why span of 16 is 5, because these 5 values contiguous on the left side, including the current element, have smaller or equal value. Let's see 14, how many days including 14 have a smaller or same value, 3 days. So the span for 14 is 3. For 8, just left value is greater. So the span is 1. For 6, just left value is greater. So span is 1. So if the value just before the given element is greater, the span is going to be 1. Span for the first element is also going to be 1. Let's see 30. All the elements in the array are smaller than 30 and 30 is the last element. So span for 30 is 10 because there are total 10 elements in the array. If your array is sorted in increasing order, your span is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. If your array is sorted in decreasing order, then your span is going to be 1, 1, 1, 1 for all days. How do we solve this problem? Before thinking of any optimization efficiency, think of a naive solution. You just need to produce this output. Let's not worry about the time complexity first. Let's think of a naive solution to solve the problem. So you may pause this video and try writing the naive solution yourself. The idea of naive solution is simple. For every element, we traverse on left of it. We keep on traversing while the elements are smaller or equal. As soon as we find a greater element, we break the loop. And while we are traversing, we keep incrementing the span value. And when we break the loop, we print the span value. So let's see with the example of 14. So I initialize the span as 1 because 14 itself is part of the span. Then I go to the left, 12 is smaller so I make span equal to 2. 13 is smaller so I make span equal to 3. When I come to 15, I see that 15 is greater than 14. So I break the loop and I come out and print the span and I print the value of a span as 3. So that same thing we have implemented here. I've used C++ style code. If you're programming in Java, then you will write system.out.println here to print the span. What is the time complexity of it? You must have guessed it. Time complexity is big O of n square. Because for this element, I'll be traversing three times. The inner loop will run three times. For this element, it'll run two times. For this element, it's going to run one times. So it's going to be n minus one plus n minus two plus n minus three up to one, which is n into n minus 1 by 2 which is quadratic. How do we solve this problem in big O of n time? You need to solve this problem in big O of n time. You may take big O of n extra space. Please pause this video and try to think of a data structure that can be used to solve this problem in big O of n time. Let me give you some hints. You need to use stack data structure here and it's not going to be simple loop you will basically be doing two n operations. You will be inserting all the items once to the stack and you will be removing every item once from the stack. So you'll be doing total two n operations on stack. That is why the time complexity is going to be big O of n because push and pop, they both take big O of one time for stack data structure. The idea of the efficient solution is to find position wise closest greater element on left of it. If I have index of such an element, I can use this index and current elements index to find the span. 
let's understand what I just said. For 13, 15 is the greater element on left of it. For 12, 13 is the greater element. For 14, 15 is the greater element. For 16, there is no greater element. So let's leave it. For 8, 16 is the greater element. Please note that we are talking about position wise closes. So no other element is considered because 16 just before it. 6, 8 is the element. 4, 6 is the element. 10, 16 is the value wise closest element. 30, there is no element which is greater on left of it. So let's leave 30. Using the index of this element and this element, I can find the span of 14. Index of this is 0. Index of this is 3. So if I subtract 0 from 3, I will get the span of 14 which is 3. And for the elements for which there is no greater element on the left of it, their index plus 1, i plus 1 is their span because they are the greatest in all of their left. So i plus 1 becomes their span. Let's see more examples. For 10, the index of 10 is, this index is 4, this is 5, 6, 7, 8. Index of 10 is 8 and index of this is 4. So 8 minus 4, 4 is the span of 10. You can see 4 is the span of 4, 10. That's what we've written here as well. For 30, there is no greater on the left. So index of 30 is 9. That is why we say span is 10, i plus 1. The reason is simple. As soon as you find a greater element on left of it, you sp stop traversing. That is what we were doing in the naive method also. Why do we use stack here to implement this logic? What is the purpose of using a stack? Stack is used to keep track of recent items. If you want to see anything from the stack, it will give you the recent items. Here, in this question, we care about recent greater elements. For example, when 16 comes, these elements, smaller elements are of no use. They do not participate in finding a span of the elements on right of 16, right? Because 16 has come greater than all. If there is anything span of elements on the left side, it would be 16. Now, when we see greater elements, we just remove these smaller ele elements from the stack because they are of no use. But when we see smaller elements, we push them to the stack. Why do we keep smaller elements to the stack? Because if there is an element which is smaller than 8, then 8 is the span of it. We also need to keep 16 here in the stack because there might be elements from between 8 and 16. So if 9 comes, the span of 9 is going to be 16. So the basic idea is this. For every element, we compare it with the top of the stack. If this element is smaller than top of the stack, we push it. If it is greater than top of the stack, then we remove the top. We keep removing all these smaller elements. If you did not get it this point, it's fine. Let's understand this with a dry run. We have initially 15 in the stack and we push index of 15 because indexes are useful to find the span. Now we push 13. We push 13 because 13 is smaller than 15. So we push it. Now comes 12. We push 12 also because 12 is smaller than the top. Now comes 14. So the top is 12, which is smaller than 14. So we remove it. Top is 13, which is smaller than 14. So we remove it also. And now we have 15 and 14 in the stack. You must have noticed that the element in the stack are in decreasing order because if there is a greater element, we remove all the smaller elements from the stack. And if there is a smaller element, then we push it to the stack. So after 14, we see 16. When 16 comes, everything goes out of the stack because all the elements currently are smaller than 16. So we have 4 in the stack, index of 16. And 16 is the only element now in the stack. We keep doing it. So the basic idea is this. If you see a greater element, you remove all the top smaller elements one by one. If you see a smaller element, you push it. Now, how do we use this logic to find the span? You can observe one thing. When you push an element, 
the element which is currently at the top before pushing it is the previous greater element. So you can subtract this index from this index to find the span of this element 13. So when you are about to push an element, you have previous greater element on top of the stack if there is anything on the stack. If there is nothing on the stack, then this element's index plus 1 is the span. So I have written the C++ style code for this as well. In Java, we create stack this way. And the function names are also slightly different. We have is empty in Java. We have peak in Java in place of top. But the structure and other syntax, it's going to be similar in Java as well. Let's take a look at this code. We, inde we push index 0 first. So 0 goes to the stack. Then we traverse all the elements starting from the second element or index 1. We keep removing the items while the top is smaller. So in this case, in 13, we did not go inside this loop because 13 was smaller than 15. Had there been elements smaller than 13, we would have removed them. Now we just need to find the index of the top, which is 0, and we subtract it from i, which is 1, and we get the span as 1 for 13. Then comes 12. So the top element is greater than 12. So we do not go inside this loop. We come here and we do i minus s dot top. We get 2 minus 1 we get the span as 1. So in every iteration, before pushing the element, we are first finding the span. And before finding the span, we are removing all the smaller elements from the stack because they are meaningless. For example, once 16 comes, everything before 16 becomes meaningless. When 14 comes, everything like 13 and 12, which is smaller than 14, becomes meaningless. Let's see what happens when we are Processing 14, when you come to 14, you compare it with the top element in this loop. So the top is 12, you remove 12, then you compare with the next top, this is out of the stack. 13 is small, so smaller, so you remove it. And after removing these two elements, and before pushing 14's index, you find its span. So its span is 3 minus 0, because i is 3 right now, and top of the stack is 0. So that's how you do find the span of 14 and then you push its index into the stack. When 16 comes, that's one corner interesting case. When 16 comes, all the elements of stack are removed. 14 and 15, they both are removed in this loop. And when you come here, you see that stack is empty. So what do you say? The span of 16 is 4 plus 1, 5. Index of 16, 4 plus 1. That's what we have written here. So that's how we find the span of all the items. We traverse from left to right. We first push 0 to the stack. And when we are processing any element, we remove all the smaller elements from the stack and then we push it. So to we make sure before pushing the item, the element which is below this element in the stack is previous greater element of this element. Let us analyze this solution. How much auxiliary space we need? We need big O of n auxiliary space because in worst case your array may be in decreasing order and all the elements might end up being in the stack. And how much time it takes? Every element goes into the stack exactly once and comes out of the stack exactly once. That is why it is big O of n. When we take a first look at this code, it looks like big O of n square. But if we analyze this way, we see that it's big O of n solution. Stock span problem is the most important problem from interview preparation perspective in stack data structure. There are many variations of it which are asked in top tier companies. I've written down some variations. We'll talk about these variations in the next lecture. So in this video, we talked about stock span problem. I'm really excited to see you guys in live classroom program. All the details of this course are given in the link below.